All right, guys, so I say this with mixed emotion. If they give me a good price on this, I am selling this truck. Still have the CarMax coat right here, so this might be a good time to do a long-term review video on this vehicle. And you might be wondering, why say, why are you selling this vehicle now? And it's because I had some negative experience with this vehicle recently, and it's really just pushed me to get at least a quote. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a lot about cons, AKA the bad and the ugly of this truck, more than the actual pro of this truck. I mean, you guys seen so many ads and so many videos about like what's awesome about this truck. I feel like my value in this video is gonna I'll be telling you guys my personal experience of bad things and i'm also going to share how much they quote my truck for because i think it does give you guys value in terms of what this vehicle is worth now my intention really is to help you guys if you're looking for maybe a used f-150 lightning or new and if you're a current f-150 lightning owner you might be able to compare some of the issues i'm having because i am going to tell you how to fix some of these also so in case you're new to this channel this is a 2022 f-150 lightning xlt now this is the base model xlt the only thing i at it really is the tailgate step which i highly recommend if you get one of these so this is the equipment group 311a and msrp for this is fifty five thousand two hundred dollars. and thank god i pay msrp for this and this vehicle has 98 kilowatt hour battery size and epa rating for that is 230 miles on the range so i had this vehicle for about almost a year and a half and the mileage i'm coming up on thirteen thousand miles so i haven't been on a lot of road trips but i have been driving this vehicle every single day and as for me i've been a F-150 owner since 2013. This is my fourth F-150. And although I rented the Tesla Model 3 for a road trip, this is technically my first EV. So on this channel, when I first purchased this vehicle, I made a video titled Six Annoying Things About My F-150 Lightning. That video is right here if you guys want to take a look. So I won't cover every single issue that's mentioned in that video in detail, but I will follow up with what happened with some of those issues. Before I go over the cons, let's cover the pros first. First, mechanically, this truck has been very reliable for me. I never had any battery issues, no 12 volt battery issue. It started up every single time. And last winter, it's been like one of the craziest winter on here. It got so cold that one night. I remember it was like 8 degrees and I was so thinking oh man my truck's not gonna start but it started off right away it didn't even hiccup the regen brake was working at that temperature granted i did lose a lot of horsepower i think the power level was reading around 58 percent with 50 percent state of charge so i did put this vehicle through some of the harshest weather so it's been through two summers and i don't have a garage and i don't get to plug it in at night so in the winter time it just sits outside in the cold a lot of times and only time i really plugged in at night is when it was like really really cold and I had to like go somewhere the next day I know the range isn't so great if you don't charge overnight and get that battery warmed up so with few exceptions really it's been through a lot <laughs> and that reliability applies when trucks not even used I had a couple business trips this year I had to leave this vehicle at an airport for about a week but I did document when I went to Vegas trip in April I did read that it was at 49% state of charge and after a week when I came back to the airport it was still reading at 49% I know vampire drain is a concern for EV truck like this but I had experienced zero vampire drains and most of the good things that I experienced with this truck also has to do with the good experience that I had with the previous F-150 for example aluminum body is something that people don't talk about I remember when it first came out people were like whoa what are you doing aluminum on a truck yeah it's been so long people kind of forgot about that but this aluminum body they call it military grade aluminum right it is pretty strong yes it's very expensive to repair if you do get thinged up but it hardly gets thinged up i definitely hit a couple shopping carts in the in a parking lot before but you know and even if you get a little scratch uh, on a metal body and a steel body if you get like a deep scratch and you go through salt like that thing starts to rust whereas in this little scratch no big deal it won't rust you just gotta paint over it over time this is my third aluminum body f-150 and i love that fact and one more thing i really love that share among other ice f-150 is the hot spot on this vehicle is fairly impressive not in a sense that it's so fast i think i was getting about like 68 megabits per second going up and then down i think it was only about eight megabits per second but what's impressive is that even when i'm in the garage like level three p3 garage i would still get signal my phone wouldn't even get that signal but i feel like the antenna on this is pretty strong so i have made this f-150 lightning my mobile office and i've been really enjoying that part another thing i was very impressed with this vehicle is that even though this is a pretty large vehicle 
it is very efficient long as you don't step on it so i did make a video about that right here so this video talks about how i was able to get over 300 miles on a standard range f-150 lightning and about a year later i was able to replicate that kind of efficiency again which i talked about on my instagram but i did that trip because i wanted to see what kind of battery degradation this vehicle went through and after two summers and one winter i lost about according to my calculation six percent on the battery range but before i go over cons i know i said i'm not going to talk about the common sense of what's great about this vehicle but i have to talk about the ride quality because that is one phenomenal thing with this vehicle the suspension and the weight of this vehicle allows this thing to be just be on cloud i don't know how else to describe it um not that i've driven like you know bentley or anything like that but i you know my first car was this cadillac cts i know i'm not very asian when it comes to my cars yes my first vehicle was not a civic but one of the frustration i had with the previous f-150s when you go on uphill especially on the highway uh granted i had a six speed transmission but towards that end of the hill you know how your truck starts to slow down and it like downshifts uh i don't know why but that kind of always wasn't like the most pleasant drive for me but this vehicle oh no it is just so fun and thrilling to drive this vehicle that's all i gotta say all right now for the interesting part of this video cons aka the things i did not like about this vehicle and first thing is the build quality especially when it comes to the interior a lot of these are plastic pieces uh, which is fine it looks pretty cool you know in the pictures in the video but when you touch it it does creak but what bothered me the most as you guys know is the rattling that was coming from this b pillar area and it took a while to figure out where that noise was coming exactly and i know in my last video where i complained about this you guys were saying just go to the dealership they'll take care of it problem with this noise however wasn't the fact that i could go to the dealership which uh, we'll talk about later uh, was the fact that i couldn't replicate it every time but when it was much warmer outside and if i've been driving for a little bit it does rattle so it's hard to replicate every single time that's why i didn't go to the dealership to take care of it so i had my wife drive we got a babysitter at the time and then i sat back in this back seat and then we just drove and drove and i figured it out it wasn't the b pillar that was making the noise it was actually this panel this door panel that's here there are plenty of how to remove an f-150 door panel so i took it off and i found that exactly all these little push pins that's holding this door together guys it, it's got so much wiggle room and like it just rattles by itself and i understand why they use it it's one way to like mass produce truck like this it's probably also fine for like a v8 vehicle you can just drown that noise with your engine noise but this vehicle is just so quiet so i ended up getting some butyl tape and insulating those pins so right on this door slash b pillar is like so much better now and one more thing i did take upon myself was the 12 volt battery door so on the six annoying things about my truck video i did mention that little tab on that door yeah it just kind of broke off and when i called the dealership mind you this is like just when i bought the vehicle they want me to like make an appointment come in and they will have to try to prove i broke it or they broke it yeah i wasn't gonna do that so i waited till the parts actually in stock and it was kind of hard to find so i'm gonna leave a link in the description for that door panel they don't even call it a 12 volt battery door it's something else so yes when it comes to build quality i think it can be a little bit better but when it came to like software side it was buggy so on the earlier days the biggest bug i had was actually a feature a very cool feature i thought and that is a way to customize the timing of your alarm um so what that is i was able to go on the app and figure out okay between like one o'clock and three o'clock in the morning if someone opens the door even with the key it will actually trigger alerts on your phone i don't know what happened guys i think like the time zone within the app changed all of a sudden i was opening my door at like one p.m and i would get all kinds of alert my alarms going off yeah it was it was bad <laughs> also being kind of new to ev i want to make sure i take care of it and my app will constantly tell me uh, accidental unplug even though i waited stopped it and then unplugged the charging port it will always say accidental unplug i'm like yo no I, I unplugged it correctly and all that to say uh, most of the bugs at 99 of them they've all been resolved there's been like so many software updates on this vehicle via the app and through four power up update i do however notice as these updates are happening kind of like a pc you know after windows update over the years you know how like computer slows down i am experiencing that on my ui interface on here sometimes when i'm clicking around and i'm listening to music sometimes the music will like skip and even some of the cameras it will just 
display this blue image instead of the actual image. Uh, it's not blue screen of death, but it definitely makes this noise like and then it goes to the blue image. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I did try to record it as it was happening. I don't think it captured that noise correctly, but yeah, that's what that looks like. And no, I did try to make sure that it still lets me do that when I'm driving. So it's not that it's blocking it because I'm driving. It, yeah, it's something to do with like the processor just not being fast enough to catch up to that image. So all that to say, I don't know how much room we have in terms of processor speed to update even more things to this vehicle. I think we're kind of seeing the peak of this update. So one of the oldest bugs that still remains today since that issue video is the 0% state of charge when I sometimes, not all the time, sometimes enter the vehicle and it just shows 0% on the state of charge. And I got used to it, so I'm not like freaking out these days, but that's still an issue. But my problem is when they do updates, they're very vague about it. So for example, this is one of the last update I received. It just says, what's in this update? Small adjustment. So your vehicle can prepare for the future updates. So there are a few times they did an okay job explaining what's been updated. For example, this is another one, distance to empty improvement. This is back in May. So they do okay job explaining things sometimes, but most of the time, you have no idea what they change. Maybe it's the XIT in me, but I would like to see in the future, four can like list exactly what's been updated. I know it's kind of dangerous to tell us everything, but I'd like to know. So within that theme, I feel like this truck tells us not enough information in some areas, but tells us too much information in certain areas. What I mean by that is that the reason why this truck's gotten such a bad rap over the winter range, it's because it tells us a little too much on this information dash. It's almost like a negative Nancy. So when it comes to range, it tells you a very, very conservative range estimate. I mean, as soon as you start it, starting from the power and the horsepower that's not available on your vehicle, it just tells you, uh, can't really feel like I'm gonna push a lot today. Yeah, power level down. And same thing goes with range. Uh, you're trying to go there? Not sure if I can make it there today. It's kind of cold. So depending on the temperature and your driving habit, it basically tells you a, a too accurate of an information right off the bat is the problem. Most people see that as, oh my goodness, I'm losing so much range. I'm losing so much power. But in reality, it's, it's telling you too much. So in retrospect, it's good, but it doesn't tell you enough information when it comes to charging. For example, when I go charge and plug in, in the vehicle, I can't tell how fast the charger is providing me power from the dashboard here i have to go on my phone app and you can kind of tell like how fast the charger is so i wish four kind of kept the theme of providing us with a lot of information in the future but my biggest issue with this vehicle it's not even an issue directly about the vehicle it's really the four service center because this vehicle is a specialized vehicle now that i can't just go to mom and pop shop they can't plug it in and run diagnostics you need special software license for that so in this area i really only have two choices when it comes comes to four dealership one that I got my vehicle from which is about almost an hour away so it's pretty far there's one like right next to my house uh, which is great even though I basically told myself I'll never go back there again on my previous f-150 it's just they're very dishonest in terms of they'll do a service or at least I think they did the service charge me for it and then I find out later because I took pictures they didn't do any of that work but it's been a while so I did go back there for my 10,000 mile maintenance which is basically a tie rotation software checkup and you know fill up any fluid so i'll technically only have one fluid to fill in this vehicle and they still didn't fill that fluid and yes that fluid is a windshield wiper fluid i was completely empty guys <laughs> and that wasn't technically the bad experience that was just kind of annoying so i did go back there one more time because they kindly replaced my running board which had that little plastic gap uh, so that was nice of them and this vehicle only had one recall so far and that's the windshield wiper motor i never really had an issue with it but i just want to take care of that because it's a simple fix technically and i don't want this video to become like a rant on this dealership but it took them two days guys and if they did a fantastic job maybe i wouldn't be so mad about it but i think they left my vehicle overnight under a tree with bunch of leaves and i don't think they blew the leaves out to replace my windshield wiper motor so they just lift the cover directly all those debris just fell in it i had to like clean that out they didn't even clip the cover back on properly so i had to like clip it myself it just it's not good and really the only reason why i went to this dealership for that service is because the dealership i purchased this vehicle from yeah their service is about six weeks out so every time i try to make an appointment it's usually six weeks out. i did miss one last time because i got sick but again like when you miss an appointment you gotta make it again it's, it's just too far so one of the biggest advantage of owning an EV is not spending that much time at a service center, right? We're supposed to have less maintenance, less headache going to a dealership, 
But now I spend so much time, even more time than my last two F-150s combined at a service center. With my busy season in life, this wasn't really making sense anymore to me. So rather than turning this into a complaint, I want to give some recommendation. If you guys are considering Ford F-150 Lightning, I would actually call the service center ahead, find out how long the wait list is, or maybe you already own Ford before and you have great relationship with the service center. I'm not saying every single Ford service center is going to be horrible. It's just something to check because I feel like Ford is not really used to having all these EVs come in for maintenance. And I don't think they have enough like technician, EV technician to be able to treat some of these issues. So that's kind of my take on it. I would love to hear from like a Tesla owner's perspective because that service center deals with all EVs. Are you guys having good experience? But Ford did live up to the expectation where when they said this is a low maintenance cost vehicle the first year, they technically did live up to that because I didn't pay anything for my 10,000 mile maintenance. So if you guys go to the account on your app and go down to four past rewards, there is going to be points. So make sure your sales rep when you first buy the vehicle sets you up with this for past reward i had enough points on there by purchasing this vehicle so i didn't pay for that maintenance luckily so before i tell you guys how much carmax offered this vehicle i want to briefly touch on who this vehicle is for i think this vehicle is still great if you have good experience in your town from Ford service centers. So if you already owned Ford and you had great experience in that service center, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to get this vehicle. And also if you have a garage and level two charger, by the way, cause level one charger does not warm up this vehicle enough to get that power level all the way to hundred percent during cold winters. So level two charger at home, hopefully a garage you can park it in is very ideal for this vehicle. Cause the winter range is not so great on this vehicle. Cause the battery is so big, you gotta warm that up, right? And if you don't mind getting your hands a little dirty and like opening up a door panel to troubleshoot rattling so if you're thinking about getting this vehicle I would definitely test drive it you know kind of watch out for those things that are breaking in my vehicle watch for those but overall I think this vehicle can give you some incredible functionality it can be really creative I mean I took this vehicle powered a whole entire music video video shoot and power all their lights I've taken this vehicle fishing with my kids and we fried up some fish from the back of the truck so I work here a lot and I can go anywhere I want during like warmer weather weathers to just get my work done as for me since i own this vehicle for about a year and a half now winter's coming and i since i have really bad experience with ford dealership around this area i am opening my eyes to see what other possibilities are there so that's why i'm getting this coat guys so carmax offered me let's see <laughs> forty-four thousand dollars for this truck so yeah, not bad. I feel like it could be worse. Uh, does feel like a regular truck depreciation to me. Uh, with Cybertruck being out, I thought it was going to be a little bit lower than this. So I do have one more homework to do, and that is to go to a Ford dealership and get that exact quote and give you guys that information. So that will have to be my next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in that video. Take care.